Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and today I hope we'll have a whale of a time building, well, a whale! <laughs> so why a whale? Well, in my cabinet, 20,000 bricks under the sea, I've got all these glass shelves, and I want to use them to my advantage by having things transitioning between levels using magnets. Uh, and I've already done that to a degree with uh, a keel on my sailboat, a kind of rudder, a motor and underside of the hull for my crab boat, and the undersides of my oil platform, including the oil pipe itself. Uh, but they're all quite similar and all quite static. And what I wanted was something much bigger and much more dynamic kind of between two levels. And one idea was to do a big creature. Uh, and although I might do another sort of deep sea creature in between two of the other levels much further down, because we've got four, one, two, and two more below that, uh, I thought it'd be really good to have one breaching the surface, because that would be very uh, eye-catching and be a great feature. Uh, and the animal that I thought would be most likely to be doing that sort of thing, and be quite impressive in size, was a whale, because they do soar up for their own entertainment and kind of breach the surface and then do a massive splash on their way back down. And I thought that would be absolutely perfect as a really big and dynamic sort of scene uh, along the same vein of, of using magnets that I have already. Uh, so basically, I'm going to have to use some pretty strong magnets in this case, because well, all of these uh, constructs are really quite small and quite light. I mean, these are quite heavy, I suppose, but the bottom half of a very large whale, because I really want to go quite big, you know, like that sort of length or something, um, is going to be very heavy. So I'm going to have to use quite strong magnets to make it work. Uh, and the design I've done is five parts big, starting at the head. So let's get going. Now this is quite an unusual build for me, building a large brick built animal. Uh, well, I say unusual, it's actually unique because I've never built one before, but basically that made it a very interesting process. Usually I rely on the sort of one or two piece sort of animals that Lego gives us perfectly sculpted. But um, yeah, it was a really interesting challenge, uh, but not one that I didn't have problems with. Uh, first of all was in the design phase where basically you soon discover that all the parts you want to use aren't available in the colors you want to use. <laughs> and I was pretty much limited in my choice between dark bluish gray and dark blue for the main body of the animal, just because the parts I wanted to use really aren't available in any other colors. Uh, and then not only that, but then just sourcing interesting and vital parts such as this. It just isn't very simple. Just because the parts exist doesn't mean they're very common or, you know, available for sale. So I've had all sorts of problems sourcing this build uh, and even problems with the quality of some of the bricks in the sort of whites are being quite fade and so on, just because so many parts I chose in the design phase were so rare. And that's what's kept me from building this a lot earlier, because I built this, uh, or designed this rather, in uh, November, I think, and it's taken me absolutely ages to get to this stage. But I think we can finally start, so let's get going. Now I'm gonna start at the head end, and I'm gonna make the whole build six wide and build it in sections, as I've said. And each of those sections is gonna be held together by balls and joints. And basically I'm going to be building kind of a recessed uh, connection section in half of the things. And then the other half will have uh, sockets kind of sticking out and then the bits will kind of clunk together, uh, but then they'll still have enough uh, kind of play in them so they can bend to form that arching back of the sort of leap out of the water that we're going to be doing. So if I add some bricks to the middle to kind of join those together and then I'm just going to add a panel on the outside just so we can't see into the back of his head in case there's sort of a chink of light or something like that and then I can add these slopes and that's what's going to be helping the two bits kind of get together because I don't want it all in the line I want it to be tilted back so he's kind of arching his back uh, into the water as he's jumping so that is there then I'm going to use these pieces which I've just really love that, that line just looks absolutely beautiful to me. Absolutely perfect for this. It's the same kind of line that I used on the other way up on, on my trains, of course, when I had the um, dark green and the roof sort of going like that on the uh, uh, Flying Knotsman. Uh, then one of the other parts that I find incredibly hard to get was these headlight bricks in dark blue. 
Uh, I had to actually spend about a pound each on them, would you believe, just to get them absolutely perfect. I was tempted to use black because you can barely see them or even use those bricks with one stud on the side. But I did want them slightly recessed with the eyes. Uh, so basically, <laughs> I just decided to be flamboyant and buy some ridiculously priced pieces. Uh, and then we can put that on the top. You see the top of his head. And I do like those eyes. There's loads of different eyes to choose from, but um, I basically landed on those. And then I can build some more of this. Then another compromise. I just found the brick version of this, the uh, two by four uh, wedge brick, absolutely impossible to get because it was only in one set, 4506 Deep Sea Predators, way back in 2004. And no one really bought any of those. So it seems they aren't available, even though they do exist. So I've got three of the plates stacked on each side. But I do quite like that, as it turns out, because I think these sort of ridges in between each of the plates kind of almost looks like part of his mouth, uh, sort of part of his lips or something like that, where he's got his baleen plates, of course, which are the sort of funny uh, structures that kind of sieve all of the plankton creatures from the water uh, when he's eating. Nom, nom, nom. Uh, so that looks pretty good. And then here's Another piece that was practically impossible to get, lots of people who thought they had that in their stores that I then bought decided actually they didn't after all. <laughs> so I had to do about four orders just to get the two of those I need. Uh, but that is a really good piece to kind of bring it in to the front of the nose. Uh, then another piece I had problems with was basically getting the opposite of that slope, which kind of looks like that, and it doesn't exist. And that was holding me back for a while. But then I realized that this one does exist with this extra side bit on. And if I basically mount it kind of like that with the extra bit on the inside, it really wouldn't matter because we wouldn't see it. So effectively, it's the exact shape of the piece I did need. And then we can put the lid <laughs> or his nose or the top of his head on there, which won't go on for some reason. There we go. And there is the whale head. And I think that looks pretty good. I love the eye. I love that sort of texture on the mouth, uh, but otherwise he's looking quite streamlined and you can see the underside's going to continue to be white and the top's going to all be dark blue. And then because of that angle, you can see he's already kind of coming up at a non-vertical angle. That would be a bit boring, but that is a lot more interesting. And he's going to be bending even further back when we get the next section done. So let's do that next. All right, so the next section is his kind of torso where he's going to have his flippers and that section's going to be five studs long. I played with all sorts of different dimensions and you can see there are the sockets that are going to be connecting to the ball joints uh, that are in that section and here are the ball joints that are going to connect onto the next section and these curved slopes just trying to hold them in place with a bit of strength. So I can add on the uh, sides of the body and more of those tall slopes. And that's going to allow me to sort of kind of tilt into the next section, another sort of whatever, 15 degrees or so, something like that. And it's a little unfortunate that the um, ball joints here are, or socket joints here are in gray, but it's unavoidable. And I will be concealing them a little bit later. Uh, and then I'll put on the uh, roof, or <laughs> rather his back, I suppose it should be, rather than the roof, but that's how I'm kind of thinking of it. <laughs> Anyway, to make that rather simple section in the middle. Uh, then we need the flipper. Uh, and for this, I'm using the 2x2 two two modified kind of old tow bar plate, uh, which is in white. And that's why I chose that one. And it will give it a little bit of strength because I'm going to use lots of different uh, kind of wedge plates and plates to build up quite an interesting profile, I think. So if I put that onto that and then like that then you'll see we've got quite a interesting edge made of different wedge plates. I'm going to add yet another one on, and this time in dark blue, to really make it look quite 3D. Uh, and that blue one will kind of conceal the joint a little bit as well, make it a bit harder to see. Uh, and then I'll just put one of these uh, boat tiles underneath there for a bit of strength. So that can go onto uh, there, and you see... It's not so visible as it would have been. And there's the other one there. So we put that on oh, there. And there are our uh, flippers. I was going to say arms, but I couldn't think of the word. <laughs> so then we can fit these two sections together. Oh, and that would be it being straight. But we've obviously taken out that section so we can tilt it. And it doesn't 
make a perfect seal if you see that I can uh, see the desk through there. But at any other angle, it pretty much makes it fine. And the thing is, you can't get much better than that, I don't think, with a brick-built animal. But look at that. He looks like he's erupting out of the water. Uh, his fins are clear. Uh, and he's starting to do his jump. But I will add one more section to the bit above water. And this will be quite simple, so I won't build it here. It's just basically another pair of sockets. But this time I haven't got anything on this side. And I've just got a panel piece in there at the angle. Because this bit's going to contain the magnet, the very strong kind of rare earth magnet that's going to be holding the bottom section on through magnetism power alone. So that is basically going to fit in that cavity. So I can, ooh, you have to get it perfectly lined up or they will ping off. Let's do that. There we go. So this is the three sections of the top of the body. Crump, <laughs> concertina up. And there he goes. Look at that. He's really erupting from the water and leaning back and <laughs> it's good from every view really there's his tummy and we can basically make these any old angle we want to make it really interesting and I think that that really looks like he's trying to do kind of the opposite of a belly flop I suppose it's kind of coming up and going to do a back flop splash and splash everyone on that oil rig and maybe the boats as well yeah so that looks pretty good tell me what you think of that uh but we better get on with the bottom half as well because well he'll need that <laughs> Good, good. Now the bit underneath the water is just going to have two sections because we're going to continue this sort of banana sort of curve underneath the waves as well. Uh, but we don't need to do it quite so much because he will be powering kind of vertically upwards. So I think two will suffice. Uh, and the next one's pretty much built like any of the others, except I've kind of sealed it in with two sets of panels here. And you'll hear a rattle because in between the panel that's right here, that's going to be connected to the underside of the glass, and in there are some rare earth magnets. And in order to keep them in exactly the right place, I've just put them between those panels, because they need to be A, very flush with the glass, but very firmly attached, but also not sort of falling all the way down through gravity to the tail. So that will keep them in place. So that's pretty simple. Uh, the only addition really there is a couple of these uh, jumper plates on the top and that's just to take a very simple and small dorsal fin because they do have dorsal fins but they are very subtle and this was another thing that I couldn't get uh, an inverted curved one by two uh, curved slope uh, in dark blue and now you can actually since designing that they've actually released a brand new set the 10298 Vespa 125 uh, so that part didn't exist in dark blue and it's not really for sale anywhere yet because nobody's parted them out really um, but I compromise with dark grey. It's kind of a shadow colour. And you know what? I quite like it now. I think if I did the dark blue on that bit as well, I think you might sort of lose it, you know, in, in amongst all the other blues and um, not see it at all as a dorsal thing because it is quite subtle. So I think I might keep that. But do let me know what you think of that. So uh, anyway, yeah, not much else to show you on that piece there. Uh, the next bit is the main, well, back end of the animal. And this was fraught with problems. So here is the main assembly. This is the slightly discoloured version of the one he's got as his chin that I will be replacing. You can probably see the difference in white between there and there. It's not so bad, but, you know, I want things to be perfect. Uh, and I've blocked up some of the uh, kind of technic holes on the bottom with these plates, just so you can't see right into the animal. And I've deliberately used a brown one here to fill over this hole here. Uh, and that was just to give the very, very subtle impression that that's maybe his bum. <laughs> Simple as that. <laughs> now, there has been a recent uh, official Lego set, the Majestic Tiger, which is a three-in-one creator set, uh, released this year, 2022, uh, which has kind of a pink piece uh, as the animal's bum. Um, but basically, uh, I did this first, because I did this last year. So, you know, I'm just saying that Lego has got spies in the Hood household or something, because they're kind of copying all my ideas before I release them. Um, but anyway, yeah, there is the animal's bum. Uh, very subtle detail, but very important. And I kind of think that this uh, boat tile here on the underside might represent, well, the rest of his uh, equipment, let's say. So... That's relatively streamlined for when he's uh, going through the water, but nonetheless, I think there would be something there. So anyway, he's anatomically correct now, and we can continue the build. Uh, here are the ball joints for joining onto that section. And again, we've got those slopes so we can get that nice 
uh, kind of tilt to give him that uh, organic sort of motion type uh, dynamic pose. Uh, and then we come to even more problematic parts. So this is where I did need lots of those uh, two by four wedge bricks. And these are all made out of plates. And we don't really need a mouth at this end of the animal. So basically it doesn't look as good here having the extra detail on the side. So I'm kind of still in the market for two on each side to make that a bit smoother. Then there's the second one of those problematic parts, uh, which I'm adding onto the back to attach the tail, essentially, in a gap there. They're very useful, those uh, double-sided ones there. I've uh, got this little uh, recess to add a plate in, and that's just vital. Uh, and then another pair of those. So actually, I need three pairs of the 2 by 4 wedge plates uh, in dark blue. But, you know, it's, it's not ruined. It's just got a bit of texture. Maybe that's his sort of a bobbly skin or something like that, like I said earlier. And then we come on to yet another problem. Sourcing these very long wedge pieces, uh, 12 by, what is it, 3? Yeah, 12 by 3, I think. This one is very nice and dark blue. This one is very faded and not dark blue. <laughs> this one is also very faded. So I'm actually going to use the two that are faded just because they match each other. So as soon as I get the, what is it, left version of that uh, in a nicer quality, I'll be swapping these over as well. But, you know, what can you do? The amount of orders I've made to try and do this whale is absolutely unbelievable. But uh, anyway, so that will go on there and that will go on there, bringing it all back to kind of a point. There we go. Looking very nice. And the thing I really like about this animal is it's massive, absolutely huge. And that's kind of what I really wanted, something of scale to be a really interesting sort of feature that would really attract your eye, much bigger than these sort of puny sharks that we'll have all throughout the tank. So there we go. There it is, but with the angle, it's tilted up like that. So all we really need to do now is add a very large tail. Now the tail was one of the hardest bits to get right, I think, just because, well, there are so many different ways you can do it really. Uh, but I've based it on another one of these white old uh, ball joints, just so I can keep the colors to the right uh, color palette as much as possible. So I'm adding that on there. Then I'm gonna add a lot of these interesting kind of angled uh, curved slopes that are used in a lot of the sort of speed champion sets and so on, because they're really uh, useful. Um, and that goes there, that goes there, and then I can add some more of them onto the ends here. And that's to give the whale a very sort of characteristic shape of tail, because that's what I probably spent the most time doing the, when I was designing this, because that, I think, looks, well, bang on, whereas just having a sort of curve or something might not look as accurate. So yeah, I think that's really good looking like it could kind of slice through the waves and look good from the underside as well. And that was really important to me as well. So that can fit onto there. Oh, hopefully without destroying it. And then that slope kind of can go up to join up with the back there. And therefore we've kind of got another tilted angle. So we've kind of got an angle there and an angle there. And again, I think that's doing a really sort of organic sort of pose in a way we've got a little gap in there and so on we've got a little gap in there but you really can't avoid that when doing these brick built animals so here we go this is our full whale in horizontal mode at the moment but you get the idea and he's looking rather fantastic if you ask me so well i'm just dying to see this in the cabinet Twenty thousand bricks under the sea so let's get the second magnet in the top section and then we can kind of clunk together the two parts uh, and have him in his vertical position where he's kind of leaping backwards uh, in a sort of back flop. Ho ho ho, so exciting is the moment of truth. There's the back end and there's the front end and you might be able to see in that crack the large magnet in that last section, kind of half an inch in each direction, so kind of a cubic half inch or, well, more accurately, an eighth of a cubic half inch, I suppose. Anyway, I'll concertina that back up and put that on the surface where hopefully it's not too nose heavy <laughs> as it stands. The two bits holding each other together will make sure it definitely doesn't fall over. And then when I bring in this section, they should absolutely catapult themselves together. 
Oh, oh, clunk. <laughs> Did you see that? Absolute power of magnets. And now they are in position. And there is our very graceful whale. That's the first word that comes to my mind. Wow. This is that absolutely beautiful curved shape. Now we have to decide which angle he looks better from. Kind of like the dark blue side more than the white side, just because that's got more pronounced kind of gaps in it, doesn't it? So maybe we should just sort of rotate this top and bottom. We definitely have to have the two sides aligned a bit. Hey, how about that? Yeah, and he's fully bent back. Yeah, the tail's bent back. Yeah, he's looking good. It might take some repositioning, but yeah, really nice. And it's just a way that you can kind of see through that glass shelf that makes it absolutely brilliant from that direction and from that direction. Look at that. Now, I might well, in due course, sprinkle kind of some cheese wedge slopes in either translite blue or in clear, kind of like we've got around the splashes uh, of this dolphin here, uh, around kind of where he's breaching. But, you know, part of me thinks it kind of looks better a bit clean. I don't know. You'll have to let me know what you think of that. But yeah, it looks very fun, doesn't he? And the size, the size is absolutely perfect. I mean, <laughs> he's almost as big as our crab boat, but he's definitely something you want to, uh, you know, give his own space to, because <laughs> if you were in a dinghy or something, he would definitely take you out with just the wave, let alone his own body. And I think we've got the right contrast of amount above the glass and below the glass, because any more above the glass, and I think it would have looked a bit sort of, I don't know, kind of like a surface vessel, kind of like the other things. I like the fact that there's a big chunk underneath, but you don't want to have too much underneath because then he doesn't look so obviously like he's leaping. But yeah, I really like that. And I just can't get enough of angles like that. Maybe that will be the thumbnail. I don't know. have to play around with it, but it definitely looks really good. So you see, using these magnets might technically not be Lego, but I mean, it really is creating some very interesting effects. And when it's all together, it means the glass cabinet doesn't look like four shelves of Lego. It will look like, well, a complete cross section of the ocean, which is exactly what I'm going for. So yeah, I don't think the top level is too busy yet. I will definitely be adding at least one more vessel for kind of a dive vessel, uh, you know, sort of submersibles and all the rest of it. But um, yeah, he is a wonderful feature that isn't a boat, <laughs> even though he's quite boat shaped, quite submarine shaped in a way as well. Yeah, and that little fin and that lovely tail. Yes. Right, well, you'll have to let me know what you think of this guy. Uh, I think you'll like him. I don't see how you couldn't, really. He looks lovely. Uh, and he's anatomically correct, of course. <laughs> <In there. laughs> yeah, very nice. And does he need a name? I'm happy to take name suggestions if we want to give him a name. Jonah the whale or <laughs> Moby might be an obvious one, but uh, yeah. Well, he's not white though, of course, is he? Cool. I'm really happy with that. I'm probably wittering, but yeah, I'm pretty proud of him. <laughs> well, he's been a long time coming, but I really do think he's been worth the wait because he looks absolutely great. And I haven't actually noticed those faded parts for one second, so... Maybe they're not so bad after all, and the sort of compromised parts that I used, uh, the plates instead of the bricks. But yeah, he is wonderful. Uh, he was worth all of that effort sourcing <laughs> over those many months. Yeah, very nice. I might have to put him in a slightly less reflective area. There we go. That's better. Very nice indeed. Cool. So as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, it'll be Monday. So I think we'll be doing the cargo area again. I'm kind of keen to get that finished, get some cranes in there and some actual crates of goods and so on. Then Wednesday, we'll be doing a brick haul. And if you want to send something to a brick haul in the future, you can to this address. Uh, and then on Friday, well, it's up for grabs again now because we've done this whale all in one go. And he looks fantastic. Wow.
Cool, right, until next time, see you.